Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video and today I have my full review of the Dell XPS 15 9530 all new for 2023. Now I had my chance to use it over the past two or three weeks of course and I've used both the Core i9 and the Core i7. I have both of them. What we're looking at here is the Core i7. Now of course this is identical to last year's 9520. The physical attributes of the exterior have remained the same. Now some people are clamoring for a redesign much like we saw with the XPS 13 plus maybe we'll see that next year but for as far as this design is concerned this is the same tried and true design we've seen for the last few generations maybe it is time for an upgrade but I am still a fan of the sleek look of the XPS 15. Now, of course, this doesn't come in cheap. It does have a pretty hefty price tag as it is Dell's flagship device. But let's see if they made enough upgrades here in 2023 to make it worth your money. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is my review of the Dell XPS 15 9530 here for 2023. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure that I'm not being paid by Dell, I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Dell is not getting copy approval. That means you're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, Dell did provide a review unit for the Core i7 model. The Core i9 model was purchased with my own money. Now, there's a big disparity when it comes to price. It all depends on which SKU you go with. Now, the starting unit, of course, comes in at only $1,649. That gets you the Core i7, the Intel Arc graphics, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. I don't think that's the one you want to go with. Now, Dell sent over the review unit. That comes in with a Core i7. That has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 GPU. And it also has one terabyte of SSD storage along with 32 gigabytes of RAM. RAM. That's the one I think you might want to look at. That one comes in at $27.99. And then, of course, three weeks ago, I did my unboxing and first look at my own personal unit. That was the Core i9. That came with the RTX 4070 and, of course, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, which, of course, I plan on expanding out myself. That one comes in at $2,849 and fully loaded, fully maxed out with 64 gigabytes of RAM, eight terabytes of storage, Core i9, 4070 GPU, OLED display, comes in at a whopping $4,699.00. Now, for those interested in checking out the XPS 15 or wanting to buy one, see the link in the description below. Now, for those that want to see my unboxing and first look review, I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. I also did a live unboxing of this unit, so if you want to see the replay, link for that video will be in the description below as well. And my takeaway, having used this for the past three weeks, and of course being the same design for the last few generations, the build quality is excellent. The all metal design is rock solid. It comes in at 1.86 kilograms for the full HD plus model and 1.92 kilograms for this OLED model. So really interesting design. Of course, it's a sleek and modern design, but a lot of you have been clamoring for a redesign for next year. So hopefully we'll see that. But of course, this is the same design this year. And again, it's a tried and true design. I have no issues with it. I still love the XPS 15's look and design. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side is a Kensington lock port, two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Moving over to the right side is a third USB Type-C port, but this one is not Thunderbolt 4. It's USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, and it is full function. Next to that is a full-size SD card reader, and finally a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. Notably missing, there's no HDMI port and there's no USB-A port. Luckily, they do give you a dongle with those missing ports in the box. Hey everybody, it's Andrew. And before we get back to our regular programming, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by UPDF, your one-stop solution for your PDF needs. Now, I don't know about you, but I deal with a lot of PDF documents, being a content creator, making videos and reviews on YouTube. I sign a lot of contracts. I'm reviewing a lot of documents. I need to be able to annotate them, mark them up, 
edit images, edit the text, and I need a powerful but simple solution to do it. And that's where UPDF comes in. It is a multi-platform PDF editor available on Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. And the best news is you only need one license for all the platforms and it all syncs up. So you don't have to worry about losing any documents or anything like that. It works really well. Now to demonstrate just how easy UPDF is to use, I'm going to load it onto the Dell XPS 15. I'm going to download a PDF from Dell. This is about the Dell XPS 15, and I'm going to move some of the images around. I'm going to edit the text and I'm going to annotate the document. So it's really, really simple stuff, but very powerful at the same time. And I have some great news. I've teamed up with UPDF to offer my audience a 54% discount if you hit the link in the description below. So head on over to UPDF.com and get that great savings on an excellent PDF editor. And I want to thank UPDF for sponsoring today's video. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I have both the Core i9 and the Core i7 models. They both have the RTX 4070 GPU, and that is, of course, limited between 40 and 50 watts. So don't get too excited by just hearing that it has a 4070, but of course, it will definitely help in video editing in Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve. And of course, we're seeing really good single and multi-core performances, as you can see year over year over the 9520, where we're seeing about a 30% increase in graphics performance and we're seeing about a 10 percent or less increase in terms of the cpu performance so again where you're going to see the major difference is going to be in that graphics performance now for those of you on the fence whether to get the core i7 or the core i9 my advice to you is for most people get the core i7 as you can see from the single and multi-core performance here on the cinebench r23 there's not a huge difference between the core i7 and the core i9 now the core i9 runs at a little bit higher clock speed and that means it will run a little bit warmer so you don't need that extra heat in an already tight chassis a very thin and light chassis considering this is a 15 inch device so it runs cool cooler and runs very similar in terms of the performance. So I would recommend for most people go with the Core i7. Now, I want to be very clear when it comes to gaming. This is not a gaming laptop per se. There are other options out there that are specific gaming laptops. That being said, you certainly can play some of the more popular titles on this laptop thanks to the GPU. This has, of course, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070, but they limit it to 40 to 50 watts. So keep your expectations in check. But if you're a content creator who wants to do video editing, this is an excellent choice for DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, no doubt about it. And when I ran the Time Spy stress test to see if this will thermal throttle under heavy load, it got a passing score of 98.3%, meaning it didn't detect any thermal throttling, and that's always good news. Now, one of the things people will be concerned about in such a compact chassis is how will the heat dissipate when you're packing such power under the hood with the CPU and the GPU. And as you can see under performance mode under load, it got around 43 degrees on the keyboard and on the underside about 55 degrees Celsius. So definitely will heat up and that is not too unexpected in this type of chassis. Now there is no vapor chamber cooling, keep that in mind. But I think overall it didn't get too hot to the touch where you couldn't use it or where you can't put it on your lap, but it definitely heats up and this is something you need to be aware of when using this laptop. Now, as far as the fan noise is concerned, they will kick in under heavy load, reaching about 53 decibels. So it's definitely noticeable and not too surprising, again, in this compact chassis with all that power under the hood. And that, of course, is running this in the ultra performance mode, pushing it to the max under maximum load. So expect the heat, expect the fan noise in that mode. But when you're doing everyday tasks, Microsoft Office email web browsing, when you're in the cool, optimized or quiet modes, you're definitely not going to hear the fans all that much. And it doesn't overheat. I can tell you that for certain. Okay, let's talk about battery life. And this retains that 86 watt hour battery we saw last year and a few generations before that. So having an 86 watt hour battery is actually pretty good. You're seeing a little bit of an increase year over year when I ran the PC Mark 10 modern office test. It did 10 hours and 17 minutes, a little bit better than last year. And then of course, when I ran the video playback test, 10 hours and 21 minutes, that certainly outpaced last year, which did nine hours and 41 minutes. And then when you're gaming, of course, don't expect it to go more than an hour, hour and a half. So really, for the most part, a little bit of an increase in battery life, not much. And for a 15-inch laptop with a discrete GPU, this is actually pretty decent in terms of the battery life. 
Okay, let's talk about one of my favorite parts of this laptop, of course, that would be the display. And again, I went with the OLED display where I really am a big fan of OLED. You get those really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, the really high contrast. But of course, if you want a better battery life, you want to have a more matte display, go with the Full HD Plus option. That is a 1920 by 1200 resolution. And that is going to be perfectly fine for a lot of you. But if you are a content creator that wants to get the best pixel count, wants to get the most vibrancy out of the display go with the oled you can't go wrong now it is a 15.6 inch oled display with a resolution of 3456 by 2160 and yes that is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio now as far as the coverage of the color gamut it is excellent and we also get a really color accurate display here so if you're a content creator this is going to be perfect to do lightroom photoshop video editing and of course color grading it is an excellent panel and it's also a great display to watch high dynamic range content. As you see here, you're going to really get those super deep blacks, everything really vibrant here. So a really great media consumption device when it comes to this display. Now, one thing to keep in mind, it is not a high refresh rate. It is 60 Hertz, whereas other manufacturers, other brands are offering dynamic refresh rates and so forth up to 120 Hertz and even above that. So that is something to be aware of. And I think it may be time to start thinking about a high refresh rate in the next iteration i think it is time for dell to start thinking about maybe doing something a little bit different as this is about the fourth time we've seen this iteration of this laptop and when it comes to this oled display which i'm a huge fan of it is pretty much the same display as the last couple of times we've gotten it so really time now for an update but as far as this display itself is concerned it is simply magnificent at the end of the day this is still one of the best out there for the content creator creator. And this OLED display is also a multi-touch display, very responsive, great for pinch to zoom and navigating the OS with your finger. So unfortunately, we get a 720p webcam on their 2023 flagship device. Not really great here in 2023, especially when we see like HP killing it with their 1440p camera on some of their Dragonfly models and so forth, or at least the 1080p. We've seen a lot of them on Lenovo as well. So we'd like to see it here on the XPS line, their flagship consumer line. Uh, definitely not great. But of course, as a 720p camera, this is certainly adequate for doing your Skype calls, your Zoom calls work from home, hybrid, whatever you may need. Of course, you could always go to a, an external camera. I know Dell makes the ultra sharp 4K. I showed it in my live unboxing of this laptop. If you didn't see it, I'll drop a link to the live unboxing replay in the description below. What do you think about the video? What do you think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comment section below. One thing to note before I go here is that it is an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition. That is pretty good. And then of course, there is the fingerprint scanner the power button doubles as the fingerprint scanner allowing you to log in with windows hello as well again let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below now, I know not all reviewers love the keyboard, but I actually have been a big fan of the keyboard over the years, and I like typing on it. I found it very comfortable. The feedback was good. The tactility was good. I never felt like my fingers were going to bottom out. So for the keyboard, to me, that has been a strong suit. I like it. Very good in that regard. It also has a nice multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. That has worked out really well. And when it comes to the glass precision touchpad, I thought it was nicely sized once again. It's the same as last year. Now, I know the touchpad has been a sore spot for a lot of users over the years. I can tell you with confidence that my unit here, both units, I should say, do not have any issues with the touchpad as far as a looseness or clickiness problem. It definitely is on pretty tight. So far, so good. And it's really worked out well for scrolling, doing all your gestures. Everything works as it should on this touchpad. Now, I've already opened this up last year and I showed the internals this year. And of course, what we have here is upgradable RAM, upgradable SSD. There are two RAM slots. So these are definitely things we love to see, especially here in 2023, when it seems like the upgradable RAM is a dying breed. Not the case with the Dell XPS 15. It still retains the two slots for the SOTUM slots and it retains the two SSD slots. So really good in that regard. Now, as far as the SSD is concerned, we're seeing Gen 4 speed 
speed, super fast reads and writes. This is definitely what we like to see. Now, as far as the Wi-Fi, it's Wi-Fi 6, although Wi-Fi 6 E capable, although the antennas have not been updated. So really limited to Wi-Fi 6 for now. And then of course, Bluetooth 5.2. Now that combo card is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user. But as far as the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, both are working perfectly fine. I've had no issues. Now, when it comes to the audio, we have quad speakers here for a total of eight watts of power in terms of the sound. So we're talking about a really good sounding laptop. In fact, I forgot just how good the sound is. The volume is really good. The bass is good. The mids are good. In fact, it even gives the MacBook Pro 14 a run for its money. Now, I don't have the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but I do have the 14 inch here. And just to get an idea of the sound, let's compare the two. And this is finally a laptop that I can say holds its own with the MacBook Pro. And dare I say, it might just be a little bit better. But let you be the judge. You tell me what you think in the comment section below. Now let's give them a listen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the song remains the same. My takeaway with the Dell XPS 15 9530, having used it for about a month, is that this is a really nice upgrade if you're looking for a graphics performance increase thanks to the RTX 4070, although it's not going to be gangbusters when you compare it to something like a gaming laptop and so forth. But year over year, we're seeing about a 30% increase in graphics performance. We're seeing about a 10% increase in CPU performance over the the 9520. Now, having said that, I don't think anybody really needs to go to the Core i9. I think the Core i7 is the way to go for most people. And if you want to save some money, why not check out last year's model? That will save you a little bit of money. And especially in the economic climate that we're in, that's always a good thing. It's still a very viable choice here in 2023. So either way, I think you can't go wrong. Now, as far as a redesign, I think we're going to see something next year more akin to what we saw with the Dell XPS 13 Plus, the 9320. And speaking of which, I have the updated 2023 model coming in to the studio next week. So stay tuned. I will have an unboxing of that and a review on the way. But in the meantime, this Dell XPS 15 9530 is definitely still a solid flagship here for 2023. I just wish it had a little bit better camera and I wish it did have a little bit updated design. But that OLED display is still absolutely gorgeous. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew and I'll see you in the next video.